Max und Moritz. A Rascal's History in Seven Tricks by Wilhelm Busch. Ah, how oft we read and hear of boys we almost stand in fear of. For example, take these stories of two youths named Max and Moritz. Who, instead of early turning, their young minds to use for learning, often littered with horrid features at their lessons and the teachers. Look now at the empty head, he is for mischief always ready, teasing creatures, climbing fences, stealing apple pears and quinces, is of course and deal more pleasant and far easier for the present than to sit in schools and churches, fixed like roosters on the perches. But, oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie, when the end comes sad and dreary, tis a dreadful thing to tell that on Max and Morris fell. All they did this book rehearses, both in picture and in verses. To most people who have leisure, raising poultry gives great pleasure. First, because the eggs they lay us, for the care we take repay us. Secondly, that now and then we can dine a roasted hen. Thirdly, of the hens and gooses, feathers men make various uses. Some folks like to rest their heads in the nights on feather beds. One of these was Widow Tibbets, whom the cat you see exhibits. Hens were hers in number three and a cook of majesty. Max and Morris took a view, fell to think what to do. One, two, three, as soon as said, they have sliced a loaf of bread. Cut each piece again in four, each a single thick no more. These to two cross thread they tie, like a letter X they lie, in the widow's yard with care, stretched by those two rascals there. Scarce the cock had seen the sight, when he up and crew with my cock a doodle doodle doo, tuck tuck tuck, the trio flew, cock and hands like foals unfed gobbled each a piece of bread. But they found on taking thought, each of them were barely caught. Every way they pull and twitch, this strange cat's cradle to unhitch. Up into the air they fly, Jimmy Nee, oh Jimmy Nye! On a tree behold them dangling, in the agony of strangling, and their necks grow long and longer, and their groans go strong and stronger. Each lays quickly one egg more, then their cross tooth other shore. Widow Tibbets in her chamber, by these death cries waked from slumber, rushes out with bodiful thought. Heavens, what sight her visions caught! From her eyes the tears are streaming, Oh, my cares, my toil, my dreaming! A life's fairest hope, says she, hangs up on the apple tree. Heart sick, you may well suppose, for the carving knife she goes, cuts the bodies from the bow, hanging cold and lifeless now. And in silence, bast and tears, through the house door disappears. This was a bad boy's first trick, but the second follows quick. When the worthy widow Tibbets, whom the cut below exhibits, had recovered on the morrow from the dreadful shock of sorrow, she, as soon as grief would let her think, began to think twere better just to take the dead, the dear ones, who in life were walking here once, and in a still noonday hour them well roasted to devour. True, it did seem almost wicked when she lay so bare and naked. Picked and singed before the blaze, 
they sat once in happier days, in the yard or garden ground, all day long went scratching round. Ah, Frau Tibbets wept anew, and poor Spitz was with her too. Max and Moritz smelt the savour. Climb the roof, craged Eve, you sh and shaver. Through the chimney now with pleasure they behold the tempting treasure, headless in the pem that lying, hissing, browning, steaming, frying. At the moment down the cellar, dreaming not what soon befell her, widow Tibbets went for sour crowd, which she would oft devour. With exceeding great desire, warmed a little at the fire, up there on the roof, meanwhile, they are doing things in style. Max already with foresword a long fishing rod has brought. Schnupp de whoop, a second bird, schnupp de whoop, up comes the third. Presto, number four, they haul. Schnupp de whoop, we have them all. Spitz look on, we must allow. But he barked, row, 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 row. But the rogues are down in stanter from the roof and off the canter. Ha! I guess there'll be a humming. Here's the widow Tibbets coming. Rooted stood she to the spot when the pan her vision caught. Gone was every blessed bird. Horrid Spitz! was her first word. Oh, you Spitz, you monster, you! Let me beat him black and blue! And the heavy little twack comes down on the poor Spitz back. Loud she yells with agony, for he feels his conscience free. Max and Moritz, dinner over, in a hatch snort under cover, and of that great hand feast now each has but a lag to show. This was now the second trick, but the third will follow quick. Through the town and country round was one Mr. Buck renowned. Sunday coats and weekday sackcoats, bobtails, walltails, and frock coats, gaiters, breeches, hunting jackets, waistcoats with commodious pockets, and other things too long to mention claimed Mr. Taylor Buck's attention, or if anything wanted doing, in the way of darning, sewing, piecing, patching, if a button needed to be fixed or put on, anything of any kind, anywhere before, behind, Master Buck could do the same, for it was his life great aim. Therefore all the population held him high in estimation. Max and Moritz tried to invent ways to plague with worthy gent. Right before the sartus dwelling ran a swift stream roaring swelling. This swift stream a bridge did span, and the road across it ran. Max and Moritz, naught could awe them, took a saw when no one saw them. Ritze, ratze, riddle, diddle, sawed a gap across the middle. When this feed was finished well, suddenly was heard a yell. Hello there, come out, you buck! Taylor, Taylor, muck, muck, muck. Buck could bear all sorts of yearing, yibbers, yokes, and silence hearings, but this insult roused such anger. Nature couldn't stand it longer. Wild with fury, up he started with his yardstick. Out he darted. For once more, that frightful year, muck, 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 rang loud and clear. On the bridge one leap he makes, crash beneath his white it breaks. Once more rings the cry, muck, muck, in head foremost plumps, poor buck. While the scared boys were skedaddling, down the brook two geese came paddling. On the leg of these two geese with the death clutch buck did seize. And with both geese well in hand, flutters out upon dry land. For the rest he did not find things exactly to be mined. Soon it proved poor Buck had brought a dreadful belly ache from the water. 
noble Mrs. Buck, she rises, fully equal to the crisis, with a hot flat iron she draws the cold out famously. Soon was in the mouth of man, all through town, Buck's up again! This was a bad boy third trick, but the fourth will follow quick. An old saw runs somewhat so, man must learn while he below, not alone the ABC raises man in dignity, not alone in reading, writing, reason finds a work in writing, not alone to solve the double, rule of three shall man take trouble, but must hear with pleasure sages, Teach the wisdom of the ages. Of this wisdom an example to the world was Master Lample. For this cause to Max and Moritz this man was the chief of horrors. For a boy who loves bad tricks wisdom's friendships never seeks. With the clerical profession smoking always was a passion. And this habit without question, while it helps promote digestion, is a comfort no one can well be grudged a good old man. When the day's vexations close, and he sits to seek repose. Max and Moritz, flinty-hearted, on another trick have started, thinking how they may attack a poor old man through his tobacco. Once, when Sunday morning breaking, Pierre's heart to gladness waking, poured its light where in the temple, at his organ sat her lample. These bad boys for mischief ready stole into the good man's study. Where his darling Mersham stands, this Max holds in both his hands. While young Moritz, scapegrass born, climbs and gets the powder horn, and with speed the wicked soul pours the powder in the bowl. Hush and quick now right about, for already church is out. Lempel closes the church door, glad to seek his home once more. All his service well got through, takes his keys and music too. And his way delighted wends homeward for his silent friends. Full of gratitude he there lights his pipe and takes his chair. Ah, he says, no joy is found like contentment on earth round. Fizz, whim, boom, the pipe is burst, almost shattered into dust. Coffee pot and water jug, snuff box, inkstand, tumbler, mug, table, stove, and easy chair, all are flying through the air in a lightning powder flash with a moment's tremendous crash. When the smoke cloud lifts and clears, Lempel on his back appears. God be praised, till breathing there, only somewhat worse to wear. Nose, hands, eyebrows, ones like yours, now are black as any moors. Burns the last thin spare of hair, and his pate is woolly bare. Who shall now the children guide, lead their steps to wisdom's side? Who shall now for Master Lempel lead the service in the temple? Now that his old pipe is out, shattered, smashed, gone up the spout, time will heal the rest once more, but the pipe's best days are all. This was a bad boy's fourth trick, but the fifths will follow quick. If in a village or in town you've an uncle settled down, Always treat him courteously, uncle will be pleased there be. In the morning, morning to you, any errand I can do you. Fetch whatever he may need, pipe to smoke and news to read, or should some confounded thing prick his back or bite or sting, nephew then will be nearby, ready to his help to fly. Or a pinch of snuff may be, 
sets him sneezing violently. Prose it, uncle, good health to you. God be praised, much good made to you. Or he comes late, perchance, pull his boots off then at once. Fetch his slippers and his cap, and warm gown his lips to wrap. Be your constant care, good boy, what shall give you uncle joy? Max and Moritz, leader mention, had not any such intention. See now how they tried their wits, these bad boy to Uncle Fritz. What kind of a bird a may bark was they knew, I dare say. In the trees they may be found, flying, crawling, wriggling round. Max and Moritz, great pains taking from a tree these bugs are shaking. In the cornucopia paper they collect these pinching creeper. Soon they are deposited in the foot of Uncle's bed. With his peaked nightcap on, Uncle Fritz to bed has gone. Tucks the clothes in, shuts his eyes, and in sweet his slumber lies. Kritze, kratze comes the tartars, single file from where the night quarters. And the captain boldly goes straight at Uncle Fritz's nose. Bah! he cries. What have we here? Seizing what grim grenadier. Uncle wild with fright upspringed it, and the bedclothes from his flingered. Arch! he seizes two more scape, graces from his shine and nape. Crawling, flying to and fro, round the buzzling rascals go. Wild with fury, Uncle Fritz stamps and slashes them to bits. Oh, be joyful, all gone by, it's a Maybach devil try. Uncle Fritz, his eye can close once again in sweet repose. This was a bad boy's fifth trick, but the sixth will follow quick. Easter days have come again, when the pious baker man bake all sorts of sugar things, plum cakes, ginger cakes and rings. Max and Moritz feel an ache in their sweet tooth for some cake. But the baker thoughtfully locks his shop and takes the key. Who would steal them? This must do. Wriggle down the chimney flue. Ratch! There comes the boy with chimney, black as ravens down the chimney. Puff! Into the chest they drop, full of floor up to the top. Out they crawl from under cover, just as white as chalk all over. But the cracknell's precious treasure, on the shelf they spy with pleasure. Knacks! The chair breaks, down they go, schwapp into the thruff of toe. And involved now in the dough, they seem monuments of woe. In the baker comes and snickers when he sees the sugar lickers. One, two, three, the bets behold, into two good broths are rolled. There's the oven, all red hot, show them in as quick a thought. Rough out with them from the heat, they are brown and good to eat. Now you sing they've paid the debt. No, my friend, they're living yet. Crispy, crunchy, like to mice, through their cases they gnaw in a trice. And the baker cries, you bet, there's the rascals living yet. This was a bad boy six trick, but the last will follow quick. Max and Moritz, I grow sick when I sing of your last trick. Why must these two scalawax cut those gashes in the backs? See, the farmer on his back carries corn off in a sack. Scarce has he begun to travel when the corn runs out like gravel. All at once he stops and cries, Darn it, I see where it lies. Ha! With that delighted eyes, Max and Moritz he espies. Wraps he opened white his sack. Shovels the roughs in hooker pack. It grows warm with Max and Moritz, for to mill the farm hurries. Master Mullow, hello man, grind me that as quick you can. In with them, each wretched flopper, headlongs goes into the hopper.
As the farmer turns his back, he hears the mill go cricky, cricky. Here you see the bits post mortem, just as fate has pleased to sort him. Master Miller's ducks with speed gobbled up the coarse grain feed. In the village, not a word, not a sign of grief was heard. Widow Tibbet, speaking low, said, I thought it would be so. None but self, cried Buck, to blame. Mischief is not life's to aim. Then said gravely Teacher Lempel, There again is an example. To be sure, bad things for you, said the baker, as we tooth. Even Uncle says, Good folks, see what comes of stupid jokes. But the honest farmer guy, what concerns is that to I. Through the place, in short, there went one white murmur of content. God be praised, the town is free from this great rascality.